Okay, so we've got in general male, female, XX being female, XY being male. But here's the thing. On those X and Y chromosomes, and here this could be one of our little chromosomes. On those X and Y chromosomes, there are actually genes that control things other than secondary sexual characteristics. So on that Y chromosome, for instance, there is a gene that controls how your eye is formed. That controls how your eye is formed and specifically that controls how the cones in your eye okay, um, are formed as the eye is being constructed when you're a fetus. And the cones allow you to do what? Does anybody know? You have rods and cones in your see eye. Color. See color. So the cones, yeah, C for color, C for cones. The cones are what give you full color vision. There is a gene on the, it's on the X chromosome rather, that controls how your eye is structured. So if you're a female, and we, we denote genes that are on the X and Y chromosome, we show the X or the Y, and then we show a little letter up above it to the side. You should be writing all this down, either on a doceri document or on the back of your packet or someplace. Or on a piece of paper. So we, we show an allele that's carried on the X or Y chromosome with that X or Y. And for the most part, we're going to talk about genes that are carried on the X chromosome. So let me ask you this. Let's say that we are talking about color blindness. That's one of the really common ones. Um, commonly used, commonly seen. And if we're talking about color vision, we show an X big N, because it's, it's dominant. Normal color vision, full color vision is dominant. This would be the allele for full color vision. And that little n, that recessive characteristic that's carried on the X chromosome, would be the allele for color blindness. I try, you'll very often see um, this listed as you know, normal, normal vision, color blindness. I don't do that. You know why? Normal is what you're born with. My husband's colorblind. Being colorblind is normal for him. If he woke up suddenly and could see the same spectrum of colors that I can see, that would be pretty weird. That's normal for him. It's not the usual condition and it is not full color vision. He is partially colorblind. There, there are colors he can't perceive the same way I do. So we show those alleles like this. Now, because color blindness, the, the allele for color blindness is recessive. As long as you have one copy of this, guess what? You have normal color vision. You have full normal color vision. So if we have a female who is X big N, X little N, that's her genotype. What's her phenotype? We wouldn't ever know that she has that recessive. So we say full color vision, but she is what's called a carrier. We only know as a geneticist or a biologist that she's a carrier when we take a family history. So let's look at this woman. What's her phenotype? Full color vision, same. Now, we don't know that she's not a carrier. It's, it's pretty much impossible to prove that someone isn't a carrier for something like color blindness. There, there is now genetic testing. Um, when I was pregnant with my daughter, there are a couple really common genetic conditions um, that are pretty serious. And so when a woman gets pregnant, especially if you're in a larger hospital that has a, a genetics lab, 
um, they will do genetic testing. And so cystic fibrosis is a life-threatening condition that's pretty common in people of European ancestry. Like one in 12 people carries one allele for it, I think. And so my first blood draw when I was pregnant at my first appointment, they test to see if I'm a CF carrier. And I was not a carrier, so they didn't need to test my husband. But <clears throat> they, you know, they don't look at color blindness because who cares? You can have a perfectly full life. There's no challenge other than, you know, you might come up with some weird fashion choices. Um, I can tell you about some outfits my husband has picked out. Um, <laughs> so no, 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 go back and change. But, you know, it's not, it's not life-threatening. It's not life-encumbering. He can't be a pilot. My husband would never be able to be a pilot yeah, if that was his dream. Railroad. Yeah, and you can't work, you can't be an engineer. You can be other kinds of things on a railroad, right? Just not an engineer, yeah. I think. Okay, so we've got somebody who is female, full color vision, but a carrier for color blindness. Somebody who is... Um, female, full color vision, not a carrier. In general, how many copies of a recessive allele do you have to have to be affected by the condition? Two, usually, right? So for all of these things, you know, for tail length or pink noses, you had to have two copies. What if you're a male... Whose genotype is that? So wait, first, hold on. Let me shift that. Okay. So this male has one copy of the normal full color vision X chromosome. He has full color vision. He does not have anything that would give him color blindness. What about this male? Does he have a backup copy of the dominant gene? No. No. So for males, for things that are X-linked, a male with one copy of that color blindness gene is colorblind. So for, for sex-linked traits, males are affected when they get one, what we'll call, you know, I <laughs> I always want to call it like a bum copy. When they get a copy of that X chromosome that codes for color blindness, or hemophilia is another one that's sex linked, or Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, there are a number of things that are um, alleles on the X chromosome. Can a male be a carrier for something that's X linked? Can a male have one copy of that recessive but not be affected? Nope. Because it's kind of like traveling with no spare tire. This, this is your flat tire right here. You have no backup copy of the X chromosome. You have no backup copy of the X chromosome. Well, for sex-linked copy, for sex-linked diseases and disorders and conditions, males are almost always the ones who are affected. It is incredibly rare. It's like one in a million to find a colorblind female. There are about six in every 100 males who are colorblind. Pretty common in males. That's why I'm always surprised when I have a biology class and I don't get a colorblind male. I, mean, I think I have one in the other class. Usually when we do the toothpick lab, it shows up because the colorblind males are cueing on shape and brightness, not color, and so their results are different than everybody else's. Um, yeah, males, males are predominantly the ones who are affected by X-linked conditions. These are called X-linked, which seems weird because, well, we think of X as being the female chromosome, but males have one too, and they don't have a backup copy of an X. So let's look at a Punnett square for how this is, how something like this is passed on. I'm going to shrink all of this. And I will use my own family as an example. Okay. So, I have no family history of colorblindness. My dad was not colorblind. Um, my, you know, I have no brothers. Um, I don't know that anybody on my mom's side of the family was colorblind. 
There's absolutely no family history of any male that I am related to being colorblind. So I assume that I am X, big N, X, little n. Because nowhere in my family do I know of a colorblind male, which would start to make me think, oh, maybe I am a carrier. My husband, we know for 100% sure, is colorblind. So, we reproduce. What are the genotypes of our potential offspring? And here you have to pull down both the X and the Y and that big N, little n. Notice that there is no big N or little n on the, on the Y chromosome because this gene doesn't exist on the Y chromosome. The Y chromosome actually has different genes than the X chromosome. That's part of what creates the secondary sexual characteristics that we see in males versus females. So, for female offspring here, looking at female offspring, how many of them are, so we have three possible genotypes for them. We have X big N, X big N, X big N, X little N, X little N, X little N. How many X big N, big N do we have? Zero. How many X big N, X little N? Carriers. Two. Two out of two. And how many affected colorblind females? Zero. So what is the percentage chance that my daughter is a carrier for colorblindness? Look again. How many, out of two, how many females are carriers? Two. What percentage is that? 100%. She is absolutely 100% a carrier for colorblindness. If someday I'm a grandma and she has a little boy, he might be colorblind is fine. Like I said, other than picking out some weird outfits, my husband does okay. He muddles through. Um, yeah, if you, have a, if you are a female and your dad is colorblind, the chances that you are a carrier are what? 100%. Because where do you get your X chromosome if you're a girl? You only have one. Where'd you get it? Or I'm sorry, if you're a girl, you got one of them from your dad. You got the other one from your mom. If you're a boy, where'd you get your X chromosome? From your mom. If you got an X from your dad, you'd be a girl. You would. Sperm is what controls um, biological sex of the offspring, because that sperm is either bearing an X or a Y. Okay, so for the males in this family, what are the chances that they're affected by color blindness? Zero percent. Okay, so why are these males completely unaffected? Their mom's not a carrier. Their mom did not have a colorblind X to give them. All of her X's were full color vision. They couldn't have gotten an X from their dad because if they did, they wouldn't be boys, they'd be girls. So let's look at who actually, how did my husband end up colorblind? His mother and father. His, well, let's look at that. So we know. It would be his mother because he's a girl and her dad is Yes. So his mother, and actually the first time I met his parents, I did a Punnett square for his mom. I'm not sure what, how she felt about that. Um, didn't know at the time I was going to marry him. <laughs> didn't know she would be my mother-in-law. Now his dad has normal color vision. So, and my husband has one sibling, and his sibling, Gesundheit, is 
a brother. Yep. There's my guy. <laughs> right there. And I won't say that I married him just because he was colorblind and I could do really cool Punnett squares with him and use them as an example in science for the rest of his life. Um, but it might have been a factor. He makes really good pancakes, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. Man, buttermilk pancakes every Saturday morning like this for the rest of my life? Uh, okay, I guess. Um, we're on our own for breakfast the other six days of the week. <laughs> okay. So, where did he get his colorblind ex? His mom. His mom. His mom was a carrier. What is the percentage chance that his mom was a carrier? 100%. Because if you're a female and you're not a carrier, you can't have a son who's colorblind. So the minute a female has a son who's colorblind, suddenly she knows, oh, hey, I guess I'm a carrier. Yeah, and like I said, it does not, it's not, you know, life-altering or impactful. It doesn't change his life other than, yes, he can't be an airline pilot, he can't be a railroad engineer. Other than, and like I said, he picks out some interesting combinations. There, there was one, <laughs> he walks down, we were still dating, we, hadn't, we weren't married yet, and we were going to some family event together, and he walks downstairs, I went over to his house to go, and he walks down and he says, I'm feeling really monochromatic today. And I said, does that mean that you think everything you're wearing is the same color? And he, I said, go back upstairs, go, go change. Because he had on like three, he had like royal blue and navy blue and some other shade of blue, but he can't see shade like that. So they all looked the same to him. So he thought it was all one color. You know, let alone, I mean, blue and black socks, blue and black pants, that's the one he cannot distinguish. So if he's laying out clothes for himself, hey, are, are these, which one of these is black? That one. Okay. <laughs> Other than that, it's totally, you know, it doesn't affect your life. Okay, now, his parents had two offspring. They both happened to be male. What are the possible genotypes for their male offspring? Okay, of the male offspring from this pair, which could be any pair, but it happens to be my in-laws, um, how many of their male offspring out of two are X big N Y? One. How many are X little N Y? One. What are the chances that any son they had would be colorblind? 50-50. And... And this made me so happy because, of course, the same night that I did a Punnett square for my what I didn't know was my future mother-in-law, I said, so Steve's got a brother. Is, is, is he colorblind? Guess what? He's not! They matched the odds. They thought I was a little strange, I think. Yeah, his brother has full color vision. So they made it perfectly. Now, is it possible that both him and his brother would be colorblind? Sure. Is it possible that they could have 10 boys and they'd all be colorblind? Sure. Is it possible that they would have 10 boys and none of them would be colorblind? Sure. It's just the odds. Every time there's a conception, it's a 50% chance for male offspring that they would be colorblind. No, 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 no. Um, so the question was, if you have a mom who's not a carrier, so you have a mom who's X big N, X big N, is there a possibility that she could have a mutation that would either create a carrier daughter or a colorblind son? Yeah. I think it's probably pretty um, unlikely, but it is possible because mutations do happen. Okay, so for my in-laws, now they didn't have any girls. They had two boys and that was it. If they had had a daughter... So now we're looking at these, whoops, these offspring. What are the chances that any daughter of theirs would have been a carrier? 100%. Look at the look at the genotypes you have. So you've got X 50/50. It's 1 and 1. 
If my husband had a sister, there'd be a 50% chance that she would be a carrier. And if there's 100, and which he did, we have a daughter, the chances that my daughter is a carrier for colorblindness are what? No, 100%. Because where did she get her other X? She got one X from me, which we assume is normal X. What did she get from her, her dad? X little n. Because that's the only X he had to give. If he didn't have the... If he had another X, he wouldn't be he, he'd be she. Go ahead. Um, no, we usually don't. And the reason being that we're talking about a specific gene on the X chromosome. So the X chromosome and Y chromosome are the only ones where we really discuss them in terms of the whole chromosome because that whole chromosome has such a major effect on something visible to us, you know, biological sex, um, which we're pretty hung up about. We're, <laughs> we care a lot about it. It's the first question we ask when a baby's born. Is it a boy or a girl? You know. Um, so we, we do tend to refer to the entire chromosome. And genetically, <clears throat> we do that because there are a whole lot of other genes on that X and Y, but when we're discussing one particular gene on it, that's what we're referencing with the big N, little n. So, yeah. That makes sense? Okay. So let's look at a strange case of a young man I had my very first year teaching. Remember I said I had a young man who, and he, he was colorblind. I'm going to give that away right, right off. Cameron. He was colorblind. And we did the beaver chromosomes, and back then I had, I think, lavender and light blue, and pink, and salmon, and light green, and tan, and yellow, and goldenrod, which I described this to my husband, and he was like, oh my god, that's my worst nightmare. That is my worst nightmare, because I didn't have the list yet with the letters on it. And Cameron had them all laid out on his desk, and he just looked up at me like a deer in the headlights and said, I'm going to need some help. Because he couldn't distinguish the pink from the purple from the light blue, because the red that was in there that makes them different, he couldn't see so well. And so we got to talking about sex-linked traits, and I said, oh, that's so cool, you're colorblind, we'll, we'll do a family history on you, and I said, okay, so Cameron, you'll know this, colorblindness comes from your, and he said, your dad. I said, no, 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 you got your colorblind ex from your mom, and he said, no, I didn't. I said, yes, yes, you did, yes, you did, and he said, but my dad's colorblind. <gasps> Cameron, do you know what this means? Do you know what this means? I'll tell you this. My first question to his, him was, do you have any sisters? Why was I so curious to see if he had any sisters? Well, because... A carrier, well, there's a 100% chance she's going to get one colorblind allele. So let's look at a cross between a colorblind male, Cameron's dad, and obviously Cameron's mom was a what? A carrier. Because Cameron was colorblind. So we know his mom was a carrier. And remember, that's the only way we can know for sure that a female is a carrier if either her dad is colorblind or she has a son who is colorblind. So just looking at any girl children that this, off, that this union produced. <clears throat> Oops. So remember, we said there are three possible phenotypes for females here. We've got X big N, X big N, not a carrier. X big N, X little N, carrier, X little N. X little n. And whether I said it or not, I kind of thought, well, yeah, but, you know, X little n, X little n, we never see that. That one really doesn't show up. Because you know, the odds against having an affected female colorblind individual are so staggeringly huge. <clears throat> For Cameron's parents, look at the female offspring only. How many X big N, X big Ns do they have? Zero. 
How many carrier females, X big N, X little n, do they have? One. Oh my gosh. Statistically, half of their daughters could be what? Colorblind! Which is why I immediately said to Cameron, do you have any sisters? Are they still in school? Can you bring them in? Can I meet them? Because he was one of the, from one of the rare families where there was a pretty good chance that you would produce a colorblind female. What has to happen here? A female carrier has to reproduce with a colorblind male. So if my daughter grows up, falls in love with a colorblind boy, I could have a colorblind granddaughter. Not that I'm going to encourage her to like selectively date only colorblind males, but it'd be really cool. It'd be so cool. I want to. Uh... You know, this is what biologists do when they're thinking about reproduction. They do Punnett squares. So we can only tell that a trait is X-linked when we start to see this pattern where only males are affected, number one, and there is a history in the mother's family of being affected. Because these, these X's, these affected X's, come down through who? The mother. And so one of the first questions I asked my mother-in-law the first night I met her and I did a Punnett square for her was, did you know your father was colorblind? <laughs> and she said, no. Now, let's look at, this is, there's something called a pedigree. And they used to always put a pedigree on the OGT. They don't, I have not seen a pedigree in any of the sample questions on the air test. But there's a question on the air test that we're going to look at at the end here um, that gets to a question that's easier to answer if you've seen a pedigree. So a pedigree is just a way of charting genetic relationships. Um, has anybody here heard of the term pedigree before in relation to this? If you breed dogs or if you have horses or cattle, um, those are typically pedigreed. So you're keeping track of who their mom and dad are and what traits they have. Um, in cattle, for instance, you, you keep track of like how much milk this bull's daughters have given because he has good genes. Okay, so in a pedigree, the basics are this. We show males as a square, and we can show a male who's not affected by anything. So this is male, not affected, male, affected. Female, not affected, and guess what a colored in circle is, an affected female. And we can do a pedigree for any trait you want. We can do it for color blindness, we can do it for curly hair, we can do it for freckles, we can do it for pink noses. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to look right now at how a pedigree would look for a given family. So actually, let's look at this. We, so we show two people reproducing together by putting a line that connects the two of them like that. And when they have offspring, we show a line dropping down, and we show their offspring. So that's an only child. That's the only product of those two parents. If we have two parents who have more than one offspring, we show it like this. Okay. So, how many offspring did this set of parents have? Three. How many boys? How many girls? 
two boys, one girl. And we typically try to show them in birth order. So we would say, well, they have an oldest son, and then a, the middle kid's a daughter, and then the baby of the family is a boy. We can also show <clears throat> twins. I'll show you how we do that. So here's another couple. So they have an oldest daughter, then a son, then they have twins. Are those identical or fraternal twins? They're fraternal. How can you tell right off the bat? One's a boy, one's a, one's a, boy, one's a girl. They're clearly not identical. If we have identical twins, the other difference, let me move all of this over. The other difference is when we show identical twins, we show them coming down, and I didn't leave myself a whole lot of space, so my little boy boxes are pretty tiny. We show, you see how that um, tees off from all the way up at the line, and this one drops down a little bit? It's a subtle, oh wait, you know what, I did that backwards, I'm sorry, I did that wrong, that's wrong. Cut. Cut. Yeah, that's right. For identical twins, we show it's splitting all the way from the line. Or for non-identical twins, because they're essentially just siblings born at the same time, so their line comes straight off that crossbar all by itself. For identical twins, they come down because they're one they're one child at conception, and then it splits and you get two offspring out of it. So those are just some basic family structures. Um, how do you show someone who has reproduced with more than one person? Because that happens a lot. How many of you have half-siblings or step-siblings? Or Yeah, I mean, we have lots of halves and steps, and I have, a, I have friends whose kids call one another quarter-siblings. It's complicated. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we have lots of those. So let's say in this case, we'll take this family. <clears throat> and let's say that this female had another partner. And there she had two boys. So that girl, this girl, and those boys are half-siblings. They share one of two parents. Those boys are full siblings. They share both parents. They share a higher percentage of DNA than they would with their half-sister. And let's make it even more complicated, because it's lots of fun to make these things complicated. Um, and actually, this is pretty close to the situation where my friend's kids call. Let's see. So let's say he also had sort of a, a second family. Okay, so if we're talking about this individual, how many half-siblings does she have? She's got four half-siblings. How many full siblings does she have? Zero. She has nobody with whom she shares both parents, but she has four individuals with whom she shares at least one parent. <coughs> So she shares her biological father with these two. She shares her biological mother with these two. How are these two genetically related to these two? <laughs> They're not. They don't share any DNA. They don't share any parents. Now, they're related in the familial sense that, like, they probably see one another occasionally and they share a half-sibling. Maybe they don't. Depends. But, yeah, they're not genetically related to one another. <coughs> they're part of a larger extended family. I, I guess that that's why you kind of had that chuckly look on your face, that, that I must have gotten pretty close to, to your family. Um, so we have some trait. What do you notice right off about that trait? Who's affected? All males. I don't see a single affected female. For whatever trait we're tracing, and like I said, this could be any trait. We can use these for anything. Let's say it's color vision. 
we have all males who are affected. If we're talking about her, is there any chance that she's a carrier? Yes. Yes, there is. Why? So here's the neat thing we can do with a pedigree. And it's especially easy with sex-linked things. We're going to take this over to the next page where I can make it much bigger. With a sex-linked trait, it's really easy to figure out a genotype for these folks. So we know his genotype. He's X little n. Why? Because he's affected. There are no other options for him. So do we know her genotype? She's his daughter. Yep, she's not affected, so we know she has at least one X big N. But we also know that her dad gave her X little N, so this could be my daughter. Okay, so do we know his genotype? X little N Y, which in turn tells us her genotype, Y. from his mom. If she had had all girls, we would never know if she was a carrier. If she had never had a colorblind male, we wouldn't know if she was a carrier. She might be. I mean, she could statistically have 10 boys be a carrier and have none of them be affected. But, you know, it's a 50-50 shot. Do we know her genotype for sure? We don't know her genotype. There are two possibilities. She could be X big N, X little N. She could be X little N, or I'm sorry. She could be X big N, X big N. Why don't we know hers for sure? She didn't have a colorblind child. Number one, she didn't have any boys. And even if she had had boys, she could have had a non-colorblind child, non-colorblind son, and still be a carrier. Just she got, you know, got lucky. Like I said, though, it's not a big impact on your life. Do we know, therefore, if her daughter's a carrier? No. Her daughter could be a carrier. It's possible that her daughter's a carrier, but we don't know that for sure. Now, if her daughter has a son, now do we know her daughter's genotype? Yes. Now do we know um, this individual's genotype? Yes, she has to be a carrier because she passed that carrier gene on to her daughter and her daughter passed it on to this woman's grandson. So with sex-linked traits, we can really only prove genotype using a pedigree. You know, we can prove what's called carrier status. And we very often show carriers with a half-filled-in circle. So we know that this one is half filled in and we know that she is half filled in. When we start out tomorrow, we're going to take a look at a air test question that relates to sex-length traits. <clears throat> hey, have a good day, folks.